All right. Um, I did find some schematics. Um, and uh, there's some disturbing things about them. One is that uh, those two strange chips, U3 and U4, are custom. And they are custom for the flute company. And there's an analog chip and a digital chip. And they go together. This is like a dual slope integrator type of thing. And this is a counter uh, interface to the to the display. So if those two chips are bad, you're you're out of out of luck. And in addition to that, uh, this op amp here is actually comes as a match pair with this analog chip. So these two uh, have to be matched. So let's hope that U2 is not bad. Um, anyway, I thought I'd take a look at the power supply first uh, to see if the, the caps are still good or bad. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at the output of the caps. They should be filtering. So I'll turn the, turn the power on. And uh, we are looking at this capacitor here. And we are getting a reflection. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So we're getting we're at, uh, 20 volts per division. So let's go to 10 volts per division. So 10, 12, about 12 volts, 10, 20, 20, not 20, about 20, 21, 22 uh, negative volts. And on the next cap, we get uh, about 22 positive volts. Now those are the two caps feeding the plus 15 regulators. There's a plus 15 and a minus 15. Uh, I don't know where those test points are yet. So let's go ahead and measure this big one here, which is the 5 volt rectifier. And whoa, well, that's not good. That's definitely not good. So the 5 volts is not happy. That would, that would explain a lot. Um, so before we do anything else, let's uh, replace that capacitor. It is, um, let's see, 4,000 microfarads at 10 volts. Uh, 4,000. Okay, let's go shopping uh, over uh, on my uh, capacitor collection. <laughs> All right, I found a uh, 4,700, so a little bit better than 4,000. And luckily there's a ground trace right here, so I could uh, put the ground lead right on there, and uh, that would work really well. And let's go to the front, and lo and behold, it's working again. So I'm putting in 1.02. 7 volts, 1.3 volts, 1.03, and it's 1.05. Let's go up to uh, 2.85. Uh, and let's see, we're on the 20 volt range. So let's go up to, here's 10.6, 10.8. So all it needs is cal calibration now. Um, so I think it's working good. Um, but now we need to figure out why we're missing a segment. Um, it's either the driver or the load resistor or the flexed PC board is cracked. Uh, it could be several things. So I need to, uh, need to hunt that one down. All right. So I'm going to test these LEDs here. Um, I have a power supply with a 1K resistor so I can reach in and I can light up segments. So you can see on, I think you can see with my fat fingers out of the way, there's that and there's that one. So the, the uh, uh, segment in question is not that one, but the segment in question is this one on this segment. So I'll move my power supply over to that segment or a digit and we can light up the top but we cannot light up the second one. So the LED is dead. The LED is dead. So we're going to have to find a replacement LED. That might be hard.
All right. There we go. It is an HP. 5082-7730. Yes, back where I used to work. Very nice. This is a very old design. The newer ones were painted white. Um, the really old one. Anyway, we need to find one of those. Or fix this one. I don't think this one's I don't think this one's fixable. <laughs> Alright, let's let's try it out of circuit. So we have uh, uh, the top one lights and uh, the next one doesn't light. No, nah, it's dead. It's a dead. It's a dead. And there's no way to rework these. All right. I just need to find one of those. 